Alright, this is a motor that I've been wanting to get and try and wow, look at that. So the epoxy is very nice, very clean and that copper is such a rich, just this like dark reddish copper color. What color is copper? Copper? It's copper. Uh, but it's such a rich color compared to some of the other light orange uh, windings that uh, I really do like this. Now this, I dislike this. Dislike it with a passion. It's very similar to the much more. So you have to set it that way. So in order to put the rotor in correctly, it's somewhat of a pain to be honest. Now the length, uh, the length I'm going to try to do just the magnet without uh, the front bit there. Uh, it's, it's not bad. It's pretty good. This is spec rotor, so 25.3. 25, 29, it's 25.3, uh, that's 12.27, 12.3. Uh, so this is a Roar approved motor, uh, and it's a very nice quality motor. Now the balancing is done in the front with some epoxy, uh, unlike the Reedy or uh, the Much More, which uh, they just have an aluminum end and then they remove material here. They add material in the form of epoxy. Uh, now, as far as the Gauss, Gauss is not bad. It's, I would say it's pretty consistent with similar motors. On average, we're looking at say 1600, so 1600 Gauss, and I'm just taking a, just a quick average between them. But again, uh, quality is very nice. It's very nice. Now, the reason why I spin it is I want an average. I don't really care much about one magnet or the other. Uh, and they're pretty close, so that's the reason why. There's the epoxy, you can kind of see that's what's used to balance the rotor right here. Uh, but now, let's go into the KV and timing. After this, I do have everything in the data table. I just show this and I speed the camera up, and the reason why I do this is so you can pause at certain uh, parts and then look at everything. So when I do the KV runs here, I will always do uh, three green, three yellow, and then two red. So the two red, that's maximum RPM. So if you pause in between, you can see how the KVs do somewhere in the middle. On the table, I only record peak. Uh, but if you wanted to compare this one to, say, the Helix uh, 25.5, I do have a video on the Helix 25.5, but if you want to look somewhere in the middle, say mid-range, how they do KVs, you would have to go back in the video and then pause right when you see either the three green or the three yellow. Uh, that's pretty much it. But other than that, uh, this motor did uh, pretty well. And it's very nicely constructed. And you can see right there that it's it's an approved motor. Something worth noting is that in order to do the timing, Hobbywing has some of the smoothest end builds. It's so easy to do the timing, especially compared to Trinity, for example, or even much more. Trinity's the worst. Uh, it's just harder to move the end bill. But on this Hobbywing, on the G3s, it's just one screw in the center. That's it. Then you just hold it lightly with your finger, your thumb. Uh, you tighten it, and that is it. Now the G4 uses two screws. G3, uh, this G3R only uses one. And this 5.1, this is where I set the uh, motor. This was, this is the final setting. This is how I'm going to install it in my F1 and run it. But notice the spread, how close. 51, 50, 49, and that's just one screw. There's a little dot there where it sets, uh, but look at the construction. So here we have the V10 G3R. This is a 25.5, uh, this is a, uh, Roar motor, so this is a this is something that you would run for spec, just out of the box. It's actually a very nice construction. I really do like the way it looks. Uh, the only thing is, if you ever have to service the rotor for some reason, you want to remove it. It's somewhat of a pain because of that little uh, bridge that it has uh, on the end bell. It's similar to the uh, much more motors. I, I actually do prefer the G4, the way that one's built. Uh, but this one's a 25.5 uh, Roar spec motor, which they do not make one in a G4. To be honest, the G3R, it's probably the G4, honestly. Uh, there's a reason why the rotors are interchangeable between them. A anyway, 
that, that aside, it's, I mean, it's smaller laminations, diameters. It looks just like the G3. So uh, maybe I shouldn't even compare it to the G4. But uh, if we look at the Gauss, the Gauss, it's, it's decent. It's pretty good. So say on average 1600. So here we have 1627. So 1627, 1580. So average 1600 for that rotor. Uh, this is the rotor number. And if I were to, oh, uh, here we go. Okay, I do have another rotor. Here is a Phantom 25.5. Uh, it's similar. Uh, the Gauss is very, very similar. Uh, Phantom is a little stronger, so it has a little stronger uh, rotor. And I'm not going to compare it to that one. <laughs> that's that's not even something we can compare. Uh, but I'm, I will be comparing now the KVs to the uh, Phantom because it's really the closest one. Uh, so 5.1, this is where I set it uh, at, in the end, uh, 5.1, my target's generally around 5, 5.1 is good enough. And KV is 2,079 KV, which is very good at 50 degrees of timing. Uh, so that's, that's a good amount. Now, if I compare it to the Helix, I do not have, I guess 5.1 is my new standard. So when I ran the Helix, I, didn't, I did not find that 5.1. I think I left that one at 5.8. Uh, but if we compare the 4.8 versus the 4.8, so here I do have uh, 4.8s. Uh, the Hobby Wing is 2,050. The Helix Phantom is 1,954. So it's about 100 kb difference. Uh, let's see, if we compare this 5.8 from the Phantom, it is running 2,040. Uh, we can do that on the hobby wing with one less amp. So well done hobby wing on that one. And it's the same timing, 49 degrees, 49 degrees. Uh, let's just say same KV. It's just 10 KV. That's, you know, the differences in the weather. Uh, but it's one less amp, 4.8 for the hobby wing, 5.8 for the Phantom Helix RS. Uh, they're both great motors. The Phantom Helix RS, to be honest, is a very reliable motor. Uh, it, it's been doing well. That's the one I currently have installed in my F1. As of this video, I have it installed in my F1. Uh, but I am going to swap it out for this Hobby Wing soon. Uh, I was thinking of doing this, but no, 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 that's no. It wouldn't be fair. Uh, but I'm definitely going to go with this uh, G3R. This G3R is definitely worth putting that F1 car. Uh, now, I'm curious about, let's look at the X factor. Well, I have a 5. Uh, 2102 at 53 degrees. Uh, so this one would be a little faster RPM uh, for the slot machine. Trinity X factor slot machine. I'm not sure why I called it that. This is a slot machine. Uh, now, I, uh, slot machine, I th those motors are impressive. Just quality-wise, uh, I have not had good luck with them. A buddy of mine has not had good luck with them. I've gone through three rotors on the slot machine. I believe he's gone through two rotors and one sensor board, and all within less than a year. Uh, keep that in mind. Versus Hobby Wing G4, I've abused that thing like you wouldn't believe. Uh, the Phantom, the previous version, uh, Icon, Phantom Icon 17.5, uh, I used to run that in actually short cores for a good period of time, and then I uh, swapped into the buggy and went with 13.5 in the short course, which I should have done from the start. Uh, but, I mean, those things take abuse. Well, uh, these are the numbers that I got on the motor that I received. Keep in mind, not, even though you may have two motors, same brand, same model, everything, uh, they're not going to be identical. So this is more of a reference. Uh, that being said, uh, I hope this was informative or at least entertaining. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe if you have not, and I'll catch you in the next one.